Welcome to Parenting Successful Teens, the podcast that cuts through the overwhelm and stress of this phase and offers parents simple, practical, cognitive, science-based strategies for keeping their teens on track. Join master coach and real-life mom, Allie Irwin, to talk about real teens, real problems, and the skills it takes to raise successful adults. Hey, I am so excited what I have for you this week because it was a really fun exchange that I had with a friend on Facebook. And it was so uh, illuminating for me that I thought I would share it with you. If we are not connected on social media, we absolutely should be. You might want to check out my free Facebook group, No BS Mom Help. Or if you're on Instagram, I am recently on Instagram. I know that makes me sound so old. I posted for the first time this week... (laughs) I'm just laughing at myself. Allie.p.irwin, and we should definitely be connected. So what happened is I posted that I was having the experience of having a moving hangover, that after all the hustle and excitement, I just feel sluggish and I've got brain fog and, you know, I'm still lots of great things are happening and I'm enjoying my life and I'm happy about all the things, but I just feel kind of hungover. And what my friend said in response to that is that she gets the same feeling after particularly intense times. So she gets this like bored, let down feeling. And that describes it exactly. And really the trick when you have this bored, let down feeling is just to tolerate it. It's just what happens. It's what brings you back to homeostasis after an intense time period. But for me, understanding the mechanism of what's happening makes a huge difference. Like If I understand what's actually going on, it's so much easier for me to tolerate and just understand that nothing's wrong. This is just part of it. Then if I don't understand it, then I'm tempted to run off and try to fix it in a bunch of ways. And it's interesting because several people commented, you know, with their ideas of how I should fix this feeling. And to me, that really indicates that they don't understand what's happening. They don't, they're not able to just tolerate uncomfortable feelings. So I think if you understand what's happening, it's going to help you tolerate uncomfortable feelings and not just skitter off and try to fix them. (laughs) And in trying to fix those uncomfortable feelings, just creating new problems. So there are two things happening. And in order to really get the most out of this episode, I want you to think about any time that you've had a a big hustle of activity. So it could be college search for your kids, college applications. It could be holidays. You know how we all get that feeling in January, like after all the excitement of the holidays, we're like, well, January's kind of blah. And then we start looking around like for the next thing to, to make us feel good again. Or maybe it's when you get home from a vacation. (laughs) I think we've all had that experience after a great vacation. We're like, wah, 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 back to regular life, off to the grocery store we go. So anything, maybe it's even around something that's bad that you're glad is over, but it's still like it's kind of hard to get your groove back afterwards. Maybe you've had a family member that's really sick. Maybe your something's happened with your parents or one of your kids. So really think about this. Anytime you've had sort of an intense focus period of activity, this is this is how to manage what comes after that. So there's two things going on. The first thing is habituation. And that is the idea that whatever we practice, we get more of. So if It's a situation where you've been worried, if you've been practicing feeling worried, not on purpose, but just it's become a habit of thought to worry about your kids' grades or worry about their sketchy new boyfriend or girlfriend or to worry about how you're going to pay for college or um, to be frustrated about the fact that no matter what you say, they do not seem to bring their dishes to the kitchen or 
whatever habit of thought that you have, that just the fact that you think that thought frequently makes it easier to think that thought frequently. Okay, any thought that you practice, even inadvertently, becomes a default thought that happens on autopilot to the point where that thought feels like a fact. My thought in regards to this move is what's next? That's the thought that I practiced over and over and over for like six to eight weeks straight, where It was super useful for me at the time because it helped me get a tremendous amount of stuff done. But I don't want to live in the land of what's next forever because it's so much pressure. Like that's, for me, no way to live. (laughs) Oh, no way to live. Because, you know, sometimes I want to just enjoy a book or a hike or, you know, dinner with friends. I don't want to constantly be referencing my to-do list. But because I have the habit of thinking that thought, it's going to take me a hot second to unlearn that habit. And the way that you unlearn that habit is you allow that thought to come in and you notice it, but you don't react to it. Okay, it's like, you know, a child that's like tugging for your attention all the time. I'm not suggesting you don't respond to your child, so... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Scrap that one. But it's it's trying to get your attention and you acknowledge it, but you don't give it what it wants. So I guess I can go back to the kid example where they're like, mommy, 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 you know, I want gum at the store. And you can say, I know you want gum, but we're not getting gum today. And you're kind of doing that to yourself with that thought. You're tolerating the discomfort of, I know you want to get up and pick a paint color for the dining room, but that's not what we're going to do right now. Right now, we're going to just chill out. Okay. Being with yourself while you have those thoughts and don't respond to them is uncomfortable. But when you know that all you're doing is breaking a habit of thought and Nothing's gone wrong. It doesn't mean, you know, just because you have a thought doesn't mean you have to respond to it. I think it makes it easier to go through that time period while you unlearn the thought. And there's literally like there's all kinds of neuroscience. I could explain to you about how the glial cells will come in and clean up and, you know, all of the different things. But none of that is important. (laughs) None of that. It's interesting, but it's not important. The important idea is that unlearning thoughts will happen. And you just have to be willing to tolerate a little bit of discomfort while it happens. And how long it takes to unlearn it, really, there's all kinds of factors that influence it. But even just being willing to tolerate it for a few days will help. Okay, the second thing that's at play is resetting sort of the pain-pleasure balance. This information is from Dopamine Nation, which was a fantastic book. I can't think of the author's name, but you can definitely Google it. And it's definitely worth a read. What she said is, first of all, dopamine is a reward chemical that gets us to do stuff. Okay, it's not just the reward of eating ice cream. But it's the chemical, the anticipation of dopamine. The anticipation of eating ice cream also releases dopamine. And so that motivates us to get up and go get the ice cream. Pain and pleasure, dopamine is the pleasure half. Pain and pleasure are co-located in our brain. They live in our brain in the same spot. And because our brains like to be neutral, they like homeostasis, when we have a lot of dopamine, it's like if you can picture a seesaw just coming from the high of the dopamine back to neutral is already going to feel like a letdown, right? Like you're imagining with a seesaw, you're literally coming down from the high back to neutral. Like even that would feel like a letdown. But what actually happens is... Our brain overcorrects to get us back to neutral, okay? So the bigger the high, the bigger the letdown afterwards. 
understanding, again, that that is just our brain doing exactly what it's supposed to do, trying to get us back to neutral. Then when that letdown happens, you can know nothing has gone wrong. This is a normally functioning human brain. You don't have to run out and get more dopamine because if you just run out and get more dopamine, (laughs) then you've just got more to come down from. Okay, so you don't want to manage your stress of this situation by continuously looking for outlets because that tips the seesaw balance more and more. By that, I don't mean that you shouldn't take care of yourself because you absolutely should. And for sure, a chocolate chip cookie or Netflix or, you know, whatever brings you pleasure is a good idea. It softens the blow. But you will be able to feel like if you can tolerate some discomfort, I'm not asking you to like white knuckle your way through it, but you'll start to notice when you're seeking dopamine as an escape and when you're seeking it as a comfort. And the more that you can comfort yourself while you're going through uncomfortable feelings, like that's good. What you don't want to do is try to escape those uncomfortable feelings. Unless, of course, they become overwhelming. And for sure, if you are having overwhelming, uncomfortable feelings, um, they call it emotional flooding. And if you are feeling flooded, you should 100% reach out and get some support. You should not suffer in silence. You should reach out to a professional or a friend, whatever you need when you're feeling that. But if you're within the bounds of just discomfort, just like an itchy restlessness, the more that you can just allow that to happen, the faster you're going to get back to feeling good about normal life. This is, it's a really key idea that with periods of growth, you need periods of rest, you need periods of return back to normal. And There are definitely coaches out there that are talking about always be growing, always be involving until the next version of yourself. And I think that they really do a disservice to people when they don't talk about these periods of recovery. And I also think that the people who just tell you to rest and chill out are doing a disservice because they don't talk about the discomfort of it. They don't explain to people why this is normal and why you should be willing, you might consider being willing to be uncomfortable. So (laughs) I hope this episode hasn't been too much of a bummer because I really think it's exciting. I think it's exciting to know that I can calm myself down. Like this is really the adult version of babies being able to soothe themselves at night. One of the skills that we get really excited about is babies sleeping through the night. Well, they're not necessarily sleeping all the way through the night. It's the idea that they can wake themselves up and then they can settle themselves down. This is the adult version of being able to settle yourself down. And it's really a vital skill. So much of our addiction issues come from not being able to settle ourselves down. And if you are not going through a particularly intense period right now, you can still practice settling yourself down with little bits throughout the day, Uh, little bits of allowing kind of that bored letdown feeling throughout the day, just allowing it and noticing the habits of thought that come and try to tug you away. So I hope this has been helpful. If you need any support, as always, you can reach out to me with any questions, Allie at AllieIrwin.com Or you can even request a single session because maybe all you need right now is a session to help you identify those patterns of thought that are keeping you locked in a cycle that you don't want. And truthfully, a single session or a couple of sessions would be a phenomenal Mother's Day gift that would help you bring so much more peace and calm to your life. So if that's of interest to you, you can um, reach out to me, Allie, at AllieIrwin.com and just tell me what you need and we'll get it for you. 
Have a wonderful week, everyone.